What is up you guys? Welcome to the video. It's that time of the month again. Today we are going to be looking at three stocks to buy going into the month of November. Uh, before we get into the stock picks, I will just take a quick second to kind of share with you guys my thoughts on the current market. Um, if you do want to skip ahead and just check out the stock picks and get out of here, I will be including like a little timestamp uh, down below the video. Uh, so check that out if you want to. But clearly we've been seeing a bit of volatility in the market. Um, the word that I kind of like to use here is like shakiness the markets have been kind of shaky and right off the bat like first things first this should not scare you okay uh, if you're a long-term investor you're holding you know quality companies uh, companies that you're confident in and you plan to invest for you know 10 15 20 years this type of volatility should not be scaring you in the slightest um, you know we think over the long term of how uh, these good companies perform how the markets perform these rough days and these bad patches you know over the long term guys they are absolutely meaningless so first things first let's get that out of the way now when we do see drops in the market um, that can often be kind of like a trigger for me uh, to potentially go in um, and buy some of these stocks while they're trading at a cheaper price. Um, and Tristan from the Cooper Academy channel said it very, very well uh, in one of his recent videos, he was quoting Warren Buffett, that volatility equals opportunity. And I absolutely agree. Uh, but where we stand in our current market, uh, just personally, I'm not like aggressively going out and trying to buy a bunch of stocks, right? I'm not trying to scoop up stocks left and right. Um, if you were to ask me, uh, I think that the markets are what I would call fully valued. Now, there's a very big difference between being fully valued and being overvalued. Um, if the markets were overvalued, I'd likely be looking to kind of sell some of my stocks, cut back on my positions and uh, reduce my exposure to the stock market, the equity market. But I don't believe that that's the case right now. Um, I'm more than happy holding my positions, uh, staying invested in the market. I want to be invested in the market. Uh, and if I do look around, I still do see uh, a handful of opportunities out there and I'd be more than happy chipping away at some positions uh, like the three stocks that we will talk about in today's video. So let's get right onto the stock picks. Um, before we get into the video, be sure to check out our growing membership group. We've gotten so much positive feedback from it so far, guys. Um, it's 50% off, link in the description below. But the first stock that we will be talking about today is the company Caterpillar, ticker C-A-T. And as I'm sure uh, many of you guys are familiar with, Caterpillar is the world's largest manufacturer in construction equipment and machinery. Uh, they're also a, a big, big player involved uh, heavily in the mining space. Uh, they're just a massive player and one of my favorite companies in the industrial industry. Now, why do I think that Caterpillar is a good stock to buy? Well, looking at their numbers here, uh, in their trailing 12 months, that's what this uh, little TTM stands for. So basically over the past year, they're generating upwards of $50 billion in revenue. Uh, so you can see how large of a company this is. And about 54% of that, so more than half, is generated outside of the US. And what's so important about a number like this um, is that when you're doing business all over the globe um, and you have this high level of uh, geographical diversification, what that does is it really helps with reducing and kind of numbing out the cyclicality of this business. And the construction industry, um, although it is like an evergreen industry, there's always going to be a need for construction. Uh, by nature, it is quite cyclical. Uh, when the economy's uh, doing well and people are out, you know, building roads and building apartments and whatnot, you know, that's great for a company uh, like Caterpillar. Uh, but of course, the reverse is also true. If let's say the economy's kind of slowing down, uh, or maybe like the cost of raw material materials are going up, um, and builders are kind of toning back on their production. Well, that is a negative, but because they have business all over the globe, you know, let's say for example, the, the US economy is kind of slumping and slowing down. Well, you know, over in Asia or, or you know, in Latin America, or wherever the case may be, things could be thriving. So just a huge positive to me when you think about the stability that that's gonna provide uh, the company with. Caterpillar as well has what we would call a very wide moat. Um, and although there is competition in the space that they do face, 
you know, the, the intangible assets that this company has developed, um, you know, through the strength of their brand. Like you think of the construction space, you think of Caterpillar, they're the most established or this trusted player. Uh, they even got a clothing line out, right? Um, you know, I'd even wear a shirt like this. This shirt looks pretty cool. And a big part of the moat uh, is the switching costs. So if you're somebody that owns like a construction company or maybe you're working out on a site um, and you have a big fleet of these uh, Caterpillar machines or, or devices, I mean, it happens, uh, but the likelihood of you just saying, like, let's just blow, let's just sell all these devices and switch uh, to another company or another provider of these machines, um, it, you know, it doesn't happen all too often. Uh, not to mention that, let's say, for example, a part breaks down. You know, if you have a Caterpillar machine, like a bulldozer or whatever, you're gonna get that part replaced by Caterpillar, uh, which is very high margin for the company, and it's a great source of recurring revenue for Caterpillar. And looking at the stock quote here, uh, from 2016 to 2018, this stock was up uh, something like 170%, which is fantastic. Um, and I've been watching this stock and uh, looking for an entry point and it just kept climbing higher and higher and higher. Um, and I just couldn't justify buying in, but now we see the stock down like 20%-ish off of its highs. You know, this is where being patient pays off. Um, and it's super, super tempting to go in and buy, you know, when the stock's going up and you're seeing all this green, but you know, you wait a few months, you give it some time, and this. This to me is a much better entry price. Uh, the stock currently trades for $135 USD. It pays a 2.5% dividend and Caterpillar is the first stock to buy in November. Moving on to the second stock for this video, uh, more of an exciting one kind of for maybe some younger viewers out there. I know I kind of talk a lot about like boring stocks, old stocks. Um, but this is a stock that's uh, not necessarily showing as much value as Caterpillar, uh, but it's definitely been a great performer for me over the past couple years, you know, just under two years. Um, it's the company Activision Blizzard, ticker ATVI. Um, and for any, you know, older people, for any non-millennials out there, this is the company behind some of the most successful gaming franchises, series like the Call of Duty series, um, Overwatch, uh, they make World of Warcraft, Destiny, uh, Candy Crush, you name it. This is a major player in the gaming sector. Um, and between this stock and Tencent, uh, which are two that I own, I think that I have a very, very nice exposure into this uh, video game sector that is growing and evolving and thriving. Um, the company recently uh, released their newest game, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, or 4, sorry, what am I talking about? 4, uh, Black Ops 4, which uh, delivered over half a billion dollars in the first three days. Um, it actually went to set a franchise record for the most combined players, um, average hours per player, and total number of hours played. And I hate to admit it, uh, but I've definitely been contributing to some of those numbers. Uh, I went and bought the game over the weekend uh, for like 90 bucks, um, and I'm probably playing it a little more than I should be. Uh, but it's a really good game. Uh, I think they did a really good job with it. Um, you know, they're trying out this whole uh, new battle royale thing, which is completely new to Call of Duty uh, for any you know gamers out there. Uh, but I've been thoroughly impressed. I uh, really enjoyed the game uh, but why do I think that this is a good stock to buy uh, on Thursday we did see the stock down about eight to nine percent um, and I'm thinking that this could be a nice little buy the dip opportunity and the reason being here and I have mentioned this on my channel before is that I am a huge fan of the gaming industry um, I think you know we take a look at where we are now I think that there's a very very promising future uh, for this space uh, I mean we look at the the growth of like esports uh, alone over the past number of years is massive I mean, we're seeing these major uh, companies committing to this space, like working out sponsorships, um, advertisement deals. We have like the NBA looking to back uh, some of these professional gaming teams. Uh, heck, you can even go to school now on a full scholarship for gaming. Uh, so there's clearly a bright future in this industry. And if you haven't seen how popular this field is, I truly do believe that uh, not too long from now, uh, you will be. And Activision Blizzard is my choice, uh, Activision and Tencent. Uh, but whether we're talking here like Take-Two Gaming or Take-Two Interactive, um, EA Sports, uh, even like Nintendo, I mean, this is just a space that I do want to be in. Um, but Activision Blizzard is the largest player uh, in terms of market cap. I typically feel comfortable investing in companies like this with a wide uh, variety and lineup of games um, and just like a history and kind of uh, reputation of just producing such quality games, uh, like I mentioned earlier. 
In their most recent quarter, uh, they beat their expectations. Uh, they set record high revenues and earnings per share. Um, the Overwatch League continues to be huge for them. Um, they have a nice mix of games that you can buy outright. Um, and then as well, they have the free games, right? The free games with the in-game purchases, virtual purchases, uh, which really does seem to be kind of the model of choice these days. Um, the stock is a bit on the expensive side in terms of their PE, we can look at here. And that is why I do prefer a company like Caterpillar. But like I said, this is a space um, that I like that I want to be in. The stock currently trades for $71, uh, pays a dividend of 0.4%, so uh, insignificant. Uh, but Activision Blizzard is the second stock to buy in November. Moving on to the third and final stock for this video. Um, this one, in my opinion, is an interesting one. Um, it's a safe, uh, yet in a way, risky play. And I'll explain what I mean um, in a second. It's the company Philip Morris, uh, ticker PM. And this could be a very good choice uh, for any dividend investors that are seeking some, some dividend yields. Uh, this company currently yields a 5.21% dividend. And Philip Morris is the cigarette company, uh, probably most well known as the maker of Marlboro Smokes. They're actually the uh, second largest publicly traded tobacco company uh, in the world. Now, right off the bat, uh, let's address the fact that for some investors, uh, maybe you at home watching this video, some people may find this type of investment uh, unethical. Um, and if that's you, uh, I completely respect that. Uh, there are a handful of investors out there that will uh, typically avoid um, you know, tobacco companies, um, casinos are another uh, very popular one uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, personally, um, you know, there's obviously lines to be drawn, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm trying to invest in companies uh, that have the ability to generate, you know, a nice, nice stream of money. Um, and a company like Philip Morris is very, very good at that. As we can see by looking here at the revenues, uh, net income and cash flow, which are three metrics uh, that I always like to consider, um, consistency is the name of the game here. Um, and this is going back as far as uh, like a decade, um, not to mention um, some very, very strong margins uh, as well hovering around around that 65% mark. But let me explain uh, what I mean when I say that this investment is a safe one, yet a risky one at the same time. Um, and I don't know if risky is necessarily uh, the right uh, word to use here, the proper term. It's more or less that if you were to invest in this company, you would be placing somewhat of a, of a, of a gamble or a bet on the direction of the company. Um, so it goes without saying that, you know, smokers are gonna smoke, okay? Whether it's winter, whether it's summer, rain or shine, these people are gonna be out uh, buying cigarettes, they're gonna be smoking, which of course provides uh, the safety aspect to a company like this. However, if we do look at the numbers, statistically, we are seeing a, a decline or, or a downtrend in the number of smokers out there um, for a, a variety of reasons, maybe um, you know, more awareness to the, the side effects and uh, the risks, you know, maybe uh, vape nation. Nevertheless, uh, Philip Morris has made the decision to dive into this uh, e-cigarette uh, vape scene. An example of this is their product, uh, the ICOS, uh, which was or which has been uh, quite popular um, over in Japan in particular. Um, essentially what it does is it, it heats up the tobacco rather than burning it. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, you basically still get the nicotine intake uh, while cutting out a lot of the uh, harmful chemicals. Now, this hasn't been as successful as they hoped here in North America. Uh, they've had kind of lower or slower sales than they were expecting. But as we can see from their website, like they're making this commitment um, to test out and try out these different vape products and e-cigarettes, um, all in an attempt to adapt to a, to a shifting market. And that's what I mean uh, when I say you're essentially taking a bet on the direction of the company, uh, because there are still a lot of questions as to uh, whether they're gonna be able to pull it off or not. But of course, we can't overlook the core of their business. Um, you know, they are still, you know, a clear leader um, in terms of, you know, internationally, uh, the smokes of choice. Taking a look at these two charts uh, taken from their investor relations page, uh, we see Marlboro right at the top of the list. In fact, if we were to look at this chart and exclude uh, the China National Tobacco Corporation, uh, the CNTC, which is a uh, huge uh, tobacco producer uh, in China, Philip Morris owns about 28% of the market share globally. So, you know, vapes, no vapes, they are still an extremely dominant player across the globe. Um, and to kind of summarize, you know, and this is strictly my opinion, this is just what I think, you know, I think to a company like 
the Philippines or some other, you know, kind of emerging or third world countries, like all they smoke there are, are Marlboros. Um, and I don't really see that changing anytime soon. Like, you know, you can go out and buy a pack of smokes uh, for a dollar, or you can go invest in this new, um, you know, vape, vape technology. You know, I have cousins over in the Philippines, like all they smoke are Marlboros. Um, so like I said, it'll definitely be um, an interesting one, um, whether you're willing to take kind of the gamble on whether they'll be able to capture this new market. But it could be a very nice option for anybody seeking some dividend income. The stock currently trades uh, for $87 per share. Um, it pays a 5.2% dividend, which is great. Um, and Philip Morris is the third stock to buy in November. So guys, those are my three stock picks for the video. Uh, what do you think of my stock picks for the month? Uh, do you own any of these stocks? Uh, you think they were good picks, bad picks? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. Um, and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, um, I post a video every Monday, um, often more than just Mondays. Um, so subscribe and make sure you hit the bell for notifications. Uh, but as always, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.